Hello and welcome. This is a follow-up to my tutorial on using Frippertronics in Reaper. If you've not seen that already, then check it out first of all. Not much of this video makes sense if you don't. So, Frippertronics. Christened by Brian Eno, invented by Terry Riley. I've shown you how you can set up the system. Here's a few ways you can get things under control and produce musical material to work with. If you've set up and used it at all, you probably found that sometimes things can get a little overwhelming, out of control. The first thing I'm going to suggest is planning out your parts beforehand. Here's a simple four part harmony. Voices are being added on each pass. I planned out my parts to follow a chord sequence rather than just blindly improvising, as fun as that is. Once you've recorded it, you can export the stem of the output of the echo system to your project. If you're using Frippertronics as a way of generating textures for your music for later editing, this is a way forward, trust me. Another advantage of this is it stops pops and clicks from infecting your signal chain. Glitches can sound good and we'll come to some ways to introduce them in a minute, but inverted commas digital ones, as a rule, do not sound pleasing, at least in this context. If you're getting digital glitches while fripping out, I recommend pressing start, stop, then start again before the beginning of your project. Okay, let's talk about controlling the beast, bringing the system under control. With such long delay times, it's often hard to ride the wave of the delay feedback and stop it going into self-oscillation and becoming an unpleasant mush. The visually minded among you might find it useful to use Reaper's spectrograph to see like a heat map of the frequencies and how they're changing over time. It can help you balance your levels. Try setting up a short delay, giving it a single signal and watch the repeats in the spectrograph. Here's a screenshot of some white noise passed through a delay system. You can see how each pass imparts a fingerprint which becomes more exaggerated over time. You can dock the plugin so you can have it just to watch as you're actually recording. So let's talk about riding that wave. How to bring a Frippertronic system under control. You might think to yourself, it's easy, simply add compression. The problem is that passing through a compressor so many times affects the signal exponentially. It doesn't take too long before you have a howling mess on your hands. Saturation as well. Too blunt an instrument to strike the signal with. You want an altogether more subtle form of processing. My best results come with Air Windows Console 7. Now this works in a distinct way to most plugins. You need to have it set up encoding and decoding the signal. I'm using it here on a group track. The parent needs to have Console 7 bus first in its signal train. And each child track needs to have Console 7 channel last in its chain. It's important now that you keep all the parent and child faders at 0 dB, unity gain. Use the fader controls on each channel's VST in lieu of the uh, normal sliders. Now you're set up, you've got something which simulates analog summing. Quieter signals will be more saturated and ghostly. You'll be able to ride the faders expressively. Here's an example with some automation going on for the faders so you can hear how it works. I'd recommend you check out AirWindows' vast library of plugins. There's one for nearly every job you can think of and lots you've never thought of. Now, we've got a signal under control. Let's look at some ways to mess it up a bit. The main VST I've been using to simulate the effect of multiple passes through a tape machine is Chow Tape. Built into Chow Tape, there's all kinds of degradation algorithms, wow and flood controls. One thing I find has a nice effect at higher tape speeds is modulating the azimuth alignment. Now this is something you could never do in real life. It has an effect on the width of the sound and gives a sort of flanging effect. Here I'm using the audio input to actually control the amount. So it's a bit like the once the machine hits a certain input volume, it malfunctions. So you can start to hear it fail at higher volumes. I like this better than just assigning it to an LFO, but you could do both. 
adding a touch more wow and flutter at high volumes as well that works well for simulating ta tape breakup but warning it can get messy okay here's, a, here's another technique i found useful for taming things if you control an eq with two different uh centers by an lfo you can have it so each pass is kind of cancelling out the previous pass so it doesn't become too much of a caricature of itself uh, that helps to control things quite a bit one thing i've done on this one here is put gvst i think it is uh, very speed which is an imitation of a watkins copycat um it's fun to play with and uh, modulate the speed and all kinds of things so that's going on each pass and making chaos um that's just one thing you could put on the effects chain another one here reverb each time it goes through it's a bit like uh the old alvin lucia i'm sitting in a room I'm sitting in a room. 